being a woman is now not a biological thing, according to, you know, this ideology. It is a feeling that you have. Hey, everybody. <laughs> I have an amazing guest today. But before we move forward, I just want to thank everybody for um, joining me and really supporting the channel and the comments and all of those kinds of things. They mean a lot to me. So it's the way we're going to make things change and giving voice to people that um, don't necessarily have the platform to, to voice this, but are very important stories and information. So today I have a young woman who, who her name is Kia, right? Did I say that right? Do I, why do I keep saying your name wrong? Did I say it wrong? Kaya. Kaya. I don't know why I want to call you Kia. <laughs> Kaya. So Kaya, I apologize. Kaya is a, a really amazing woman. I think I, I met you on Instagram or it could be Twitter. I don't know. But um, we found each other and, and she really wanted to talk about her story. And her story really, I think, will resonate with many, many people out there today. What's going on? She's a young person. She's 23 years old. And her story is pretty profound. And really, it does, for me, it really resonates with what is happening with a lot of the youth today and this gender ideology stuff. So please take it away, my friend, and let's hear about you and talk about you and, <laughs> and share your story with the world. So thank you so much. And tell us about yourself. Um, so I guess my story starts, I um, kind of like most stories, I was a tomboy or gender nonconforming growing up. I uh, used to really, I was really into sports and superheroes and I dressed really masculinely. I actually, when I was really young, I passed as a guy. I used to get called he and sir a lot. All of my friends were guys. And it wasn't um, weird. At least I didn't feel, you know, strange or kind of weird presenting this way or being seen this way. Um, things kind of changed when I went through puberty. You know, my body started changing and suddenly I stopped passing as a guy. And uh, a lot of my guy friends, they started going through puberty and I felt like we were not on, we, we didn't have the same experiences anymore. Um, I was like, I was a big feminist growing up. So I definitely was thinking that, um, you know, boys and girls are the same with the exception of like a small bit of their of biology, but it was negligible in the long run. But when I went through puberty, suddenly those differences were much, much greater. Um, you know, I can't ignore that there are these differences. And I think that it was a bit challenging of me feeling like, oh, I am different than the guys in these major ways. How does that affect my identity and how I see myself? And um, but yeah, going through puberty was rough. I definitely didn't mm. feel super com comfortable in my body mm. as I went through it. Um, and it was strange because uh, a lot of the girls that I went to school with, at least I felt like they... It, it wasn't as hard for them to go through puberty. They, you know, as soon as their body started changing, they begged their parents to buy them like different clothes to show off the way their body was changing. And I was really confused at that. Um, but yeah, I, I did feel definitely different. I knew that there was something different about me kind of compared to the other girls. And again, you call that gender nonconformity or still just being a tomboy or having body issues. But I did feel kind of disconnected from what the other girls were experiencing. I was going to say that. So I think a lot of young people, especially young girls, go through this, especially since you were hanging out with guys, you know, I kind of, very similar to me, hanging out with guys. So you just feel comfortable being with the guys. So on some level, when the puberty hits, you're confused because so many things happen with boys and girls or with girls trying to hang out with boys, right? All of these levels of things are happening. And, and then you have these other girls who are experiencing puberty who are actually embracing it, but you're like, ah, I'm not really cool with this. So, so, I'm, okay. So, so I get it now. This is, this is so great. So now uh, moving forward. So you're in, are you in uni university during this time? So you start going to university. Yeah. So, you know, a few years later, yeah, I start going to university 
And um, this is where I first, well, I had kind of been introduced to gender ideology very vaguely um, when I was in high school. So I had realized that I was attracted to girls and I went on to kind of an LGBT website, just a vague to figure web vague website to see um, kind of what was I gay? Was I bi? And that's where I kind of saw the list of like the infinite sexualities, the infinite genders. And I wanted to kind of understand them because this is the, or what looked like the official LGBT yeah. terminology that was being used. Um, so that's where I kind of started to get into it, but I didn't really get deeper into it until I got to college and I had to go through DEI training. And there was this whole, like, you have to respect people's gender identities and we're going to do pronoun rituals. And I didn't understand it. Um, but the way that it was explained to me was um, that one, um, the sex binary is not... Um, it's outdated, the idea that we separate things based on sex um, for a couple of reasons. One, because, of course, intersex people exist and they have been erased from studies on medicine and science. Um, two, because uh, trans people exist. And once you start to go through hormones and surgeries, your anatomy changes and you actually become more <laughs> like the opposite sex than of the sex that you were born. And then also because um, it is actually harmful to both trans people and intersex people um, like to acknowledge their biological sex because that is the excuse that people have been using to like oppress them for ever. So that's outdated. We don't do that anymore. And the science backs it up. You know, here are all of these studies by these big names and medicine and gender studies and their MDs and PhDs. And they're saying that, you know, it is now, this is the new way of doing things is that we don't talk about biology anymore. <laughs> and we don't talk about um, like presentation either. So we wouldn't say that someone looks like a man or looks like a woman because or someone looks masculine or looks feminine because that relies on outdated gender stereotypes so we don't categorize people by the way they look and we don't categorize people by the way that they are biologically so we have to let people tell you who they are and what they are and that is the most correct way to categorize people uh um Oh, uh, I'm just going to cut in here for a minute. I'm literally going to cut you off because as you see, my face is like, <laughs> so this is what everybody out there, this is what they're teaching young people at universities as acad academia. They're literally lying. They're actually making stuff up. Now, there's a difference between saying I have a theory or I have an opinion about that, but they're telling you that <laughs> they're telling you that factual scientific information is wrong. And this is an this is an actual university, and this is where kids are learning. I mean, I'm sorry, I don't mean to, you know, not an insult to call you a kid, but you know, a younger generation is learning this stuff from our actual universities. Wow. Wow, I'm actually really actually disturbed by this. I mean, I already know this is happening because I speak to a lot of you young people, but the fact that you're out here and saying it to the world is so beautiful and awesome because now we can actually get it from an actual person who was in this space who is telling you this is exactly what is happening there, whether you want to believe it or not. She's telling you this is her experience. So wow, friend. <laughs> so could you, I'm sorry if I made you lose your space, but could you continue? <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. So on top of kind of all of that, there is the, so that's kind of the science side of it. The, and then there's the moral side of it. So there's this idea that, you know, if you question someone's identity or you talk about someone's biological sex, then you are creating dysphoria in that person or you are like triggering their dysphoria. And so if you don't want people to harm themselves or to like destroy their mental health, then you won't bring it up or else you are actively causing that person harm. Um, and so, yeah, so it becomes, you know, 
it is on you to see this person this way, treat this person a certain way, and to never question it or else you are actively harming people and causing all of these terrible things to happen. Um, and yeah, and this is for any any variation of um, whether it's, you know, someone who, uh, someone who identifies like a trans man, trans woman, but also I've met people who use like three or four different sets of pronouns who identify as non-binary and will say like, I want to use he, she, and they, but only like they 30% of the time and she 50% of the time and he 20% of the time. And if you don't use them in that, um, that ratio, then you are supposedly like actively harming this person. And so it is on you to put in the effort to, you know, keep up with the changes of the pronouns <laughs> if they change every day, if they change every week, um, or else you're, you're violently misgendering people. And that's a, the worst thing that you can do. Wow. Yeah. So I also, I want to kind of clarify, this wasn't every single person that I met there. And this yeah. wasn't yeah. even uh, most yeah. of the people that I know who identified as non-binary and use maybe they, them pronouns were not hostile. Actually, the people who were the most hostile were the quote unquote allies. They were mm. typically the people who were like minoring in gender studies or something and were very protective of, you know, this, these people and would, you know, yell at you, even if the other person wasn't around <laughs> and, you know, you're just talking to a small group of people and you mess up one time and then suddenly someone comes out of the blue and is yelling at you who wasn't even part of the conversation. And so those were kind of the situations that, that uh, I was in that were kind of, yeah, just very, very strange. Um, but I guess how I kind of got into it, into thinking that I was non-binary is, um, you know, you get explained, this is the new way that we're categorizing people. So you and yeah, so you have to figure out where you are within this new system. Um, and identifying, like being a woman is now not a biological thing, according to, you know, this ideology, it is a feeling that you have. And the way, again, the way that this was explained was trans women feel gender euphoria when their, are, when their gender identity as a woman is validated. And so if you don't feel gender euphoria, when you're called a woman or seen as a woman or treated like a woman, then you're not one. And so that was when I was like, okay, um, maybe I'm not a woman. And I've, I've seen a lot of people who will say, well, non-binary is just, you, you don't fit into gender stereotypes. It's just that you're not 100% masculine, not 100% feminine. But that's, that's not how it is within like the actual ideology. The idea is that there are, certain traits or certain aspects of who you are that can hint to your gender identity. But in the end, it is up to you to determine what words make you feel the most like you. So some of the things that for me, they, when I started talking about maybe I'm non-binary, it was all right, well, let's look at some of the maybe symptoms or things that, have ex that you've experienced that might hint to the fact that you are not a woman. Um, so being growing up a tomboy and feeling more comfortable with, with guys, um, being comfortable being called him when I was younger, being uncomfortable with my body when I went through puberty, all of these things were maybe signs that, and in the end, if I still wanted to identify as a woman, I could, but if I felt more comfortable using a different term, then that was a term that I should use. It's just whatever I want and whatever makes me feel comfortable. So I started going through different terms, um, demi-girl, genderqueer, gender fluid. I started, this was with kind of a small group of friends um, who I was talking to about this. I, I didn't come like out very publicly with it, um, but I was testing different pronouns, she, they, they, them, he, they, all pronouns. Um, and I, it was very strange because I, with all of these terms, because there isn't any set rule as to which one means what, like you don't actually, I didn't know which one I was supposed to pick. 
because <laughs> every time I would ask, like, what's the difference between gender fluid and gender queer? And it's, well, it's whatever you interpret it as or whatever makes whatever you want it to mean. And so I'm going back and forth with all of these words and none of them really mean anything, but they can mean whatever I want them to mean. So what am I doing and how am I supposed to figure this out if there isn't any baseline to jump into? Wow. Um, wow. Wow. So you, you must have been, wow, they're like leading you down this sort of like circle your circular path because it just goes around and around how, how are you even figuring so basically what they're telling you is everything is a feeling everything is a feeling of, of being a woman is a feeling being a man is a feeling being non-binary there is no definition and you don't need to define it for anybody this is why i see certain people uh, doing things like, we don't need to educate you, figure it out for yourself. Or I don't care that the cisgender scum don't understand it. They need to, that's why, because they themselves don't have a definition of who and what they are and why they are coming up with 5 billion neo pronoun, whatever, whatever, and leading young people down this path. So, you know, oh man, it breaks my heart on some level because I know it's already a confusing time at this age. And now you're around a bunch of other people that are confusing who you are and what you are and sort of feeding you these terminology. And people who are lost will take that on. They will because they want to find themselves. Everyone does. And it's such a vulnerable university. Number one is vul you're vulnerable at university because it's a new space and you're meeting kinds of people and there's a pressure. And then you have on top of it, identi identification or community or so, wow. So you started, you started uh, identifying more in the non-binary. So you just were trying things on uh, and seeing where you fit in this space, right? So that, okay, so continue my friend. Yeah. Yeah, so kind of, I started to kind of realize that these words weren't really making sense, but I, felt like I had to figure this, figure out how to understand them because everyone else around me seemed to have come to this conclusion that this was correct. Again, you know, all my professors seem to be on board with this. Uh, if you Google, you know, is, is non-binary legitimate? The first hundred things that come up are absolutely no one is questioning this unless you're a alt-right bigoted, terrible person who hates trans people. So I'm going, okay, I, I just must not understand. I must not be smart enough to understand these. Maybe if I just think about it more, educate myself more, eventually I'll understand what, what is happening and what people are talking about. But things started to fall apart uh, when I, I got sick and ended up in the hospital. And I remember my parents telling me, because they couldn't stay with me, um, that I, I needed to have a female nurse taking care of me because I was 18, I'm in the hospital, and it, it's dangerous if you have, you know, you're the youngest person in the adult ward and there's, you know, you can't have a male taking care of you. And my brain broke at this moment because I couldn't comprehend using this new way that I was looking at the world, like what is a female nurse? Is this just anyone who identifies as a woman? Is this because I can't I can't acknowledge biological sex because that's bad and that's outdated and that's bigoted. And I can't acknowledge even presentation because that's bigoted and that's stereotypical. But I'm also not supposed to ask people how they identify because that can cause dysphoria. So how am I supposed to figure out? But I knew that there's a difference because even in this gender kind of sphere, they will say that, that men have privilege and men are more violent towards you know trans people. So there is some acknowledgement that there's a difference between men and women, but what is it? <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, so yeah, I spent quite a bit of time in the hospital with not a lot to do because you're in the hospital and I'm thinking through all of these different scenarios where gender self or self identification um, isn't applicable and it actually doesn't make any sense. Like, why are we separating sports based on self ID? Why are we separating bathrooms based on self ID? Why are we separating anything based on self ID? What does self ID actually mean in the real world outside of in the person's own head 
or like if you're sitting down with maybe your therapist or something, but why does the rest of the world in general like need to know what, how you feel about yourself on any given occasion? Mm -hmm. uh, but even having these thoughts was bad. I knew that was bad. These, these thoughts are harmful. These thoughts are dangerous because now I'm questioning the existence of trans people, the legitimacy of non-binary. Um, and I, I started to get like panicky and I was trying to kind of put my, like censor my own thoughts and quiet my own thoughts and not to think about things because I knew that this was going to, if I had talked about it, it would get me labeled a certain way. Or if I, even just continued to think about it, I was like leading myself down a road to hatred or, you know, something bad was going to happen. Um, and so I, I ended up going back to school and once kind of the cat was out of the bag in my mind that I was starting to question this, I couldn't stop. And I became kind of depressed that I, cause I thought that I was a bad person. And I thought that I was this anti-science denying, bad, terrible person who just needed to, you know, pretty much put myself in the education camp and re-educate myself on these topics because these questions just weren't adding up in my mind. And I still was identifying as non-binary. I think that my thought process was, well, this is all real, but maybe it just needs a little bit more work. Maybe this, this, I, this new way of thinking just hasn't been thought through all the way to where these questions are being answered. So if I can just find the answers, everything will make sense. Mm. And so the kind of the next thing that really made an impact on me was I was training to be a teacher at this time. And I went into one of the schools that I was teaching at, it was a middle school. And I saw the wall, this was in 2018 now, um, and I saw um, the wall of like genders and sexualities. It was the first thing that you saw when you walked into the school. And I didn't understand if this is, this seems to have so many, maybe things that haven't been thought out. Nothing really seems to be defined. How are we teaching this to kids? What are they being taught? Are they just being taught here a bunch of terms and they mean nothing? <laughs> like, how do you actually teach this? Just here's a flag and here's a term or what, what is being taught here? Uh, and so I went back to, you know, where I was studying and I remember asking people questions about this and finally started talking to people and saying, I don't understand what this is and why it's being taught. And here are some of the flaws I'm seeing in this ideology. The first two conversations that I had with people led to them just telling me that they never wanted to speak to me again because I was being, yeah, like a hateful transphobe. I think this was the first time I heard the word turf. Oh, and wow. Wait, was this 2018 yeah. still around the teacher? 2018, yes. And so what, what, uh, what was the, could you tell me what the grade level was that you were teaching or uh, what? Yeah. Uh, little, uh -huh. It was, it was a middle school. So it was kind of the, so the middle school is what, sixth through eighth grade where I was teaching. So yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Great. Sorry. Go on. So you, so now you go back to where you're learning and they're telling you that you can't ask questions that you're a bigot and a transphobe. Let's just shut that down real yeah. quick. Wow. My friend. Okay. This yeah. is such a great story. I just, I'm like, wow. But you see, I keep going. Wow. Because I'm actually wowed. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Go on my friend. And yeah. So kind of, like I said earlier, I wasn't out to everyone with kind of this ident non-binary um, identity that I was trying to work through. So these people were people who didn't know. They thought that I still kind of identified as a woman or maybe that I somewhat identified as a woman. And I, I figured that, well, if I told them I identified as non-binary, maybe they would change their tune, but anyone should be able to ask questions. It shouldn't matter whether you identify as non-binary or not, or identify as trans or not. Why are, you know, Maybe only some people are allowed to, and why is that? Um, but yeah, so I, those, 
I, I got into, I had a few more conversations. None of them ended well. They all ended up in either big fights or being called names. Uh, and again, I started, I became even more, my mental health got really bad because everyone who was around me seems to be so like engulfed in this, in this thought process. And I've taught, I've told the story to some people who I know, and they'll tell me, oh, well, you were just, the reason that you believe this is because you were gullible. It's because just like your peers told you something and you just went along with what everyone else was saying. And I think it's so hard to understand that the city that I was in and the place that I was in, it was not just a small group of my peers. It was my professors. It was everyone at my school, everyone in my classes. Even when I went out of my, off of my campus and into the city, they have, you know, the, the new, the progress flag flying everywhere. I never saw the American flag flying. I always saw the progress flag in, you know, in stores and being flown on the street. Uh, where I went to school, um, this is not really related to the, the gender stuff, but they, you, I saw, used to see Antifa graffiti outside of my school. So that's kind of where I, where I grew up. Are you in school. Portland? Are you in Portland, Oregon? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm just not kidding. In Portland. <laughs> um, wow, friend. Wow. Just wow. This is so great. I mean, I just going to stop you and thank you again. I really appreciate you so much. This story is going to resonate with so I'm telling you, I get so many young people like you telling me this, but they're too scared or, you know, in a position that they can't say what you're saying, but this, this is not isolated to you. This is a huge thing that's going on in universities and with young people. And as far as I'm concerned, you were indoctrinated into a thought process that you obviously felt very scared to even speak out against, even though your own brain said, wait a minute here, this is, you know what I mean? This is um, actually purple. It's not red. And you're, they're telling you, no, 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 it's actually red. It really is red. And you're just, that's gaslighting. That's all of that. But to me, this is so profound because it's showing me that you were literally indoctrinated into a thought process that you knew was wrong, but you felt so scared to even push on it. Because when you did, every single adult or, you know, person who was, you know, in a position of power was telling you, no, shut up and just go along with the, with the, with the ride. So again, I'm thanking you because you are just so, so amazing. So Wow. Okay. So where did we, where, where are we now in the story? It's so crazy. Um, oh yeah. Um, school. Uh, well, school. I've, I've been talking to people. Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. been talking okay. to some people and yeah, so that really, that went poorly, yeah. um, pretty poorly. So I stopped talking to people who were in my immediate like circle, people who were at my university. Cause I figured they all would give me the same answer. Um, or if they had, different answers. Cause I, I do think there was one person who had a question who came to me like on the side and whispered something. I think it was about, um, this person was dating a guy identified as non-binary and was saying, um, does this mean that my boyfriend isn't straight anymore because I'm non-binary or is my boyfriend still straight? And was like, but that means that either I'm invalidating his identity as a straight person or he's invalidating my identity as a non-binary person. Uh, but that was, but then they kind of just went, oh, well, um, I guess whatever. We're just all queer and then moved on. I <laughs> <laughs> see how that works. They literally fixed it. So, so they literally like could, they could maneuver that one. So it totally resonated with them. But if you do it the other way, they're like, ah, but they literally did what they're telling us that we're not supposed to be doing. So, wow, my friend. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, but so, yeah, so I eventually, I called, I started talking to people who were outside of this kind of bubble that I was in. Um, I called people who I, I knew from home cause I, I'm not from like a very liberal, um, mm -hmm. state mm -hmm. and I was telling them, Hey, this is what I'm seeing. And this is what I'm experiencing. And what I was told is that's not happening that is some sort of like right wing conspiracy theory. No, this isn't actually happening. Like, why are you watching Fox news? I think is what I was told. Um, and like this, or like, Oh, if it is happening, then it's only happening on near campus and nowhere else in the country. So you're over exaggerating. Um, whatever this is, you know, you just need to calm down because you know, it, yeah, it's not that big of a deal and you're making a big deal out of nothing. So, uh, kind of uh, at this, 
Do you know anything about cults? If you know anything about cults, and I do because I dated a woman who was actually born and raised in a cult, and I'm very fascinated by cults, you know damn well this is literally the the tactics they use. These are the tactics. You don't see that. You don't hear it. Don't question it. Move forward. You're not allowed to. And when you leave, right, detransitioners to me are people who are leaving the cult. You get ostracized and you get, ah, you're, you know, like you're a bad person. Wow, my friend, this is so insane. This is like, I would not even believe this if if it was written. And I, you know what I mean? Like you can't even like, like if you made a movie about this, like really, this is actually people are in the United States are thinking this way is, is so scary. Actually, this story is scary. So, okay, my friend, I, I'm sorry, I keep cutting you off because I'm just, um, okay, so don't question is where you left off. Do not question. Do not question. Yeah. So I, again, I went back and I went, okay, I like at this point, I, I believe that I'm just an unsavably terrible person and that there is, you know, nothing that I can do. My thoughts are bad. My subconscious is bad. I must have been raised the wrong way. I'm blaming my parents. My parents are great, but I'm like, my parents raised me to be a bigot. And so you know, I, I can never, I, I have to stop like talking to them. I have to stop, you know, um, like, yeah, I have to They're... stop dealing with or talking to or thinking about anything that is against this. And so I, I went back and like doubled down on um, kind of being non-binary and I started talking to people about, um, Maybe f I, I, that's why right. I went back to um, my friends that I originally talked to about being non-binary, the people who really knew about this journey that I was going through of like questioning and changing my pronouns and things. And I, I started telling them, actually, I'm a little bit confused about this gender stuff. Can you tell, can you explain it to me again and explain it to me in a way that I'll understand it? And what they told me was, the reason you don't understand this is because you are a gender. So a gender means you don't have a gender identity. And so they said, because you don't have a gender identity, you don't understand it. And so you're pushing back against it because it doesn't resonate with your personal experiences of not feeling like a man or a woman or anything in between. But just because you're a gender, um, doesn't mean that you should invalidate other people's gender identities, because if you had a gender identity, then you would understand this. But because you don't have a gender identity, that's why this is confusing to you. They, I, I, yeah, started to believe that I was a gender. This was when I came out a little bit more. I started using different pronouns in like my classes and with more, more friends. I started talking about, um, I was binding at this point. I started talking about getting top surgery because I figured, well, maybe if my if the outside matches the inside of my soul, then I'll feel more comfortable, and then I'll really understand this euphoria that people are feeling. Because right now, I don't feel gender euphoria, and it must just be because, you know, I look like a woman and I'm being treated like a woman, and so that's what's causing me um, to be so uncomfortable with this whole thing. The outside isn't, yeah, I'm not I'm not presenting in the way that will call, give me euphoria. Um, so how I finally, finally got out of this, this is the, the final happy ending of the story. <laughs> um, I, COVID happened. So now we're in, this is the beginning of 2020 and I went home and I had a prolonged amount of time where I was away from all of this. And during that time I sat with my thoughts. And I went online, I was reading a bunch of different things from kind of gender critical type of people. Um, I was reading like Julia Robertson, who worked for After Ellen. Um, I was watching videos from like Ariel Scarcella. And I started to realize, oh, there are more people kind of out there. And these people are gay. So they're not you know there's no way that they're like homophobic um if or that they hate the lgbt community if they're gay um but then i started reading more and there's like there was this whole thing about how like there are lesbian turfs and um, i was like oh well then maybe they're not so good uh, 
But then I, I found um, through watching Ariel's videos, I found like Blair White and you and Rose of Dawn and the offensive tranny and like a bunch of other trans people who are speaking out against this. And I'm going, OK, well, maybe this is it. OK, well, now there are trans people who are speaking out against this. So maybe they're like so they, they can't be transphobic if they're trans. Um, and I started learning more about like what gender dysphoria actually was and the whole process of you know, getting diagnosed and then going through these therapy and these procedures and things and then going through surgery. And that just made so much more sense than anything else I had heard. Like, even if even if everyone I was listening to was st was still a terrible, terrible person, the logic was on the sides of these people who were talking about this. Um, and so that kind of gave me a sigh of relief. It took me still a while to de as you kind of probably what you would say decultify myself into believing that like okay wait maybe these people aren't terrible like maybe i'm not terrible and i i think that i kind of realized if i'm this concerned about being a terrible person i'm probably not a terrible person like if i'm this worried about people's feelings then i i'm not just actively trying to hurt people maybe there is some amount of you know logic and compassion that i am exerting here because I am thinking things through and I do care and I am becoming really upset at the fact that I could be hurting people. So I can't just be an unfeeling, you know, person who's part of this hate group that I don't even know exists. If, if I am coming at this from a place of like trying to be kind and trying to be open-minded, trying to think through these things logically and really just wanting what's best for people. Um, but also like, I shouldn't be afraid of my own brain. Um, well, that, I mean, you just said so much. Gosh, you said so much. You said so much that is going to resonate with so many young people out there who feel exactly like you, who cannot question what they are being told. Basically, you had to deprogram yourself because you were programmed to have a way of thinking that says, if you don't think like this, you're transphobic, you're, you know, you're phobic, you hate LGBT people. That's, and you're, you, you clearly are a kind soul. You have a beautiful heart. I can feel it. I know. I see you. And and that that your questioning is that. Questioning is sensitivity. It's compassion. It's empathy. That's what questioning is. When you don't question anything, that to me is a closed off mind. It means that you, and on some level, is more hateful. I see them teaching you hate. I do not see them teaching you compassion and love and to help the world. I see them saying, if you don't get on board, you're a bigot, you're a this, you're a turf. And you figured it out on your own because you're clearly smart enough to make that journey. The one thing I see from this story is the fact that you got away from co with COVID. It took you out of that, right? So it gave you an opportunity yeah. to be by yourself and to start to think on your own. They don't want you to be by yourself because this is what happens when you leave the sort of space, right? You're now on your own. And every young person I've spoken to almost says the same thing. It's when they got away from it. Right. And parents who tell me when I took my child away from the the space they were in, they immediately stopped uh, uh, identifying as trans. They bit, went back to living their life. They're super happy. They're no longer depressed. Why are all these kids depressed and angry and mean? When you transition, you're supposed to be happy and moving forward. Like, like that's me. I'm the happy tranny because I literally did what I needed to do to move forward. And I, you, you do not in any way, shape or form make me feel less than I am, nor do detransitioners. So that's what I want. So if if you're if you affect my transition then there's something wrong with me because nobody should affect your transition it's your transition it's for you but i see something else and you just nailed it my friend you you are saying exactly what a lot of people need to hear and know is happening so as you started to deprogram yourself when you got home what what were the next steps cuz did you go back to university or were you done with your university I did. Um, so one of the uh, probably one of the best things that happened after this was I did go back to university, but my classes were online, so I wasn't in the same space. Um, and I at this point, I definitely was a, I, I was kind of out mentally. I, I like there was no way I was going back to believing the stuff I was believing before. 
It was still kind of hard though, because I still did have to sit in these classes where they're going through these pronoun rituals and I was still in my teaching program. So I'm, you know, sitting in these classes where the teachers are telling us like, you know, or my professor telling me and my fellow teachers in training that here's how you're supposed to introduce this stuff to your kids when you're teaching. And, you know, here's how, if you're, if you're a non-binary teacher, here are different ways that you can get your students to like validate your identity. And it was kind of in, in classes, you know, I still couldn't speak out and I couldn't say, I couldn't question it and say, why are we te teaching this to kids? Or, you know, does it, does it really make sense for us to have our students validating our identities or talking about our sexualities with them? Uh, because wow. I, you know, I said I had to sign this DEI statement and I know that if I were to speak out, I could get into disciplinary trouble. I could, you know, be removed from a class potentially. Um, and I, wow. so yeah, so I, I, I stayed, still stayed silent, even though I was kind of mentally taken out of it. And that was rough to go through, you know, not being able to still not being able to speak my mind and feeling like I had this big secret that. I don't believe in this, but I still have to kind of pretend like I do so that I don't get in trouble in some way. Wow. Uh, so yeah, so when I graduated, I still um, worked in the city near where I went to school. And it's, at least where I went to school, it was the same thing. Um, or at the work where I was working, it was the same mm -hmm. thing. We had these DEI trainings, what I'm talking about. Um, like how to make people with different gender identities feel comfortable in the workplace and how misgendering is a violent crime. And, <laughs> um, God. and yeah, so it was, it was really rough that, yeah, pretty much nowhere could I talk to people about it. I couldn't talk to any of my, the people that I worked with, anyone that I knew, or just anyone of my friends at all, um, anyone who didn't, who hadn't stopped talking to me wasn't aware because I knew that this was this would have been this huge fight and this big issue. And I, I, I people have told me they're like, you should just not be friends with these people. But that would mean pretty much cutting off all of my support. And that wasn't something that felt right at the time to just, you know, pretty much. Yeah, to, to actively cut off everyone who was in my life no. besides my parents. Yeah. Um, and so. Yeah, um, I'm not That's there so anymore. Sad. I'm not in that city That's, anymore. I, I uh, recently left, and so <laughs> that breaks my heart. Like, actually, I, I'm a very sensitive man. If you didn't know, I can cry at the, the drop of a. But that actually makes me want to cry because I can't just imagine at your age and all your friends, and then you feel this weird isolation from them, and you can't really be honest with your friends. But at the same time, you can't just bail because then you have no friends, which is actually even more detrimental to your yeah. mental health. And you struggling with all of this is so sad to me. It just hurts my feelings so much because at your age, you should never be in a specific position like this and and you know you should be able to question isn't that what university is about critical thinking questioning learning you know what has happened to our institutions is absurd and actually disgusting my kid who's 10 isn't going wherever you went and also to a bunch of these other universities I, he is not going i'm going to send him somewhere else to go to school i i'm just disgusted because if this is what you're being taught it is not life skills, okay? Those are not real life skills. Those are actually some absurd, nonsensical, cultish behavior that will will actually be so detrimental and not only the future of you as a human, but the future of you as a person who wants a career or, you know, the fact that we're being told how to, how to talk and that if we don't do this, we're being violent. That's all, it's all manipulative insanity. So I just feel it. My heart goes out to you because I can't even imagine the struggle it was for you to deal with this as a young person. Friends are important at your age and having like mindedness and being able to have conversation is so important. So so today you seem really great. Tell me about what's going on. Yeah. Um, so I guess pretty recently I, I decided to start kind of speaking out about it. I went on I'm on Twitter. Um, now, and I just wanted to, I think I wanted to do a couple of things. One, I wanted to 
reach to maybe reach people who are in a similar situation to show that you're not alone in the way that you're thinking you're not alone in the way that you're feeling um, but also i think i wanted to maybe bring a bit of empathy to the people who are on the other side of this like the anti-woke crowd because they only see it from one perspective and because no one who's inside of the kind of cult ever wants to have a conversation the people who are anti-woke don't understand what's going on or what people right. are thinking or why people are thinking the way that they do and so i think i just want to bring a little bit of a of perspective to both sides that no que yes questioning things is okay you know yes you're right to question things and also like the people who are in this are not terrible people they're not um you know these terrible misogynistic homophobic i mean some of them are right but a lot of them are Art. just conf yeah but a lot of them are just confused and are being told these things that are really harmful to both to them and to everyone around them mm -hmm. and it's it's really hard to get out if you don't have that opportunity to if you don't have that space or if you don't have some external force for some people yeah an external force that can come in and say you know it's okay um, yeah. And one of the things that was lucky for me was that like being non-binary wasn't the super core part of who I was. It never became that deep because I wasn't introduced to it until I was, um, I, I wasn't introduced to the ideology until I was 16, didn't start identifying as, as non-binary until I was 18. But like if I was introduced to this when I was five, six or seven, started identifying with non-binary at 10, 11, 12, it would be so much more difficult to have that kind of introspection and to say maybe this thing that i've been thinking for the past 5 10 15 years is wrong like that's so hard and it yeah because you have to once that if that's really your identity and that's the most important thing about yourself you have to rebuild yourself from the bottom up and that was like a big struggle for for me when i kind of came out was i had to reframe the entire way that I saw like the world, um, cause it wasn't for me, it's not just the gender stuff. There's also a lot of stuff with like race and other identities that is kind of crazy the way that this like really far left group goes about it. So I had to reframe everything. Wow. And wow. Wow. yeah. And your color, I mean, being a woman of yeah. color also, I'm a hundred percent sure that played into it. No doubt. You know, I, I wanted to stay focused more on the gender ideology stuff, but I, I wanted to also mention, I, 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 I can't even imagine also being a person of color at, you know, that's a whole other huge conversation we can have, but now you're dealing with it also a person, were there other, were there a lot of, was it mostly white or do you find that there was a lot of people of color involved in this? No. So that's another big thing. Most people who identify as non-binary are white. Almost all of them are white. <laughs> I, uh, I we know the not... answer. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I have sorry. Met maybe, maybe two or three black people in this entire experience who identify as non-binary. Um, and that, like, it's, it is almost entirely white. There you go. Um, it's real. <laughs> I knew it. I say it all the time. It's a privileged <laughs> space, my friends. You know, you're choosing. Remember that. I didn't choose this, right? Remember that. This is completely a disorder. That's why they keep trying to dismantle me and say that what I have is not a disorder. It's euphoria. Please, <laughs> euphoria. I am not euphoric being in this space. In fact, I would have chose to be born as a man. So that's some weird stuff going on. But you see how they're dismantling sort of it so anyone can be anything they want to be and that's just absurd Ugh. i definitely the like i mean people try to joke about the oppression olympics but there definitely is this hierarchy of different identities and being like being non-binary is at the top everything else is um less important than and even like being a trans like man or woman is beneath being non-binary because if you're a trans man or woman, you have what they call binary privilege. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> um, 
Um, yeah, oh, there's God. like, there's all these different weird, you know, privileges and things you have, like, there's, you know, passing privilege, and then there's binary <laughs> privilege, and then there's masculine privilege. And then there's, um, like, if you have nowadays, like, if you don't use neo pronouns, you there's privilege, because your pronouns are like real <laughs> words. <laughs> and, um, words are violence don't forget words are violence you want to know what yeah. violence is when you get shoved in the face because you're black or you know you're gay or you get you know i got my ass kicked constantly when i was a young gay woman so don't even you want to know what violence is it's not so much words violence is when you really get you know what i mean come on people we're teaching this such behavior that's so insane if we're bringing violence down to words what what that means it's just lost we've lost our way on so and teaching young people this behavior is so insane so you're reaching out my friend you are doing the work because you care i will amplify your voice so much as much as i can you are amazing uh you are wanting to do the work because you are in it and you are gold because you were in it and you saw it and nobody can question you because you literally were in it, my friend. It's like literally when people get in cults and they get out and they speak against it, right? It's, it's pretty much the same. And they try to silence you. They try to silence you. So, so this is what you're doing now. You're writing, I'll, I'll put your, um, I think you have a sub stack. I'll put that in the comments. I mean, in the thing here, is there, and you have a Twitter, do you have any other social media that you want me to post? Um, just, yeah, just those two for right now. I, right. I'm thinking about trying to reach out onto TikTok because of just all the craziness happening there. Yeah. Do it. Please do it. You, you're at a, I'm on TikTok, but, eh, but it doesn't matter. I, I'm an old fart. So it doesn't matter. I'm just use it. Cause you know, it's, it's just good. But you, my friend could create a huge platform on there. And I think you will, you will amplify this message. Be on, people need to hear it. Friend, people need to hear it. There are other people like you out there. You know it. That's why you're doing it. They need to hear that they're not crazy and that they're not bigots and that they're not transphobic and that the way of thinking is okay and it's rational. You know, we've lost rational thinking and, and, and this desire. If you want to be whatever you want to be, how come they how come they can be non-binary but other people can't be trans-binary? It doesn't make sense to me, right? Everything has to be non-binary. It's fascinating. Wow. So with that, my friend, I, I appreciate your voice. I appreciate you as a human. I'm here for you. I'm totally have your back. I would love to be friends with you and, you know, reach out to me anytime. But everybody, thank you for sitting here and listening to her story. I think it's going to really save lives and people will start to see this is opening up the door. You know that it's opening up the door so people can peek in to see that secret thing that's happening over there that people don't understand what you said. People are not, they don't understand how it's happening. You are opening the door. Is there any last words you'd like to say before we head out? Um, just thank you for, for bringing me here, letting me um, kind of tell my story. I appreciate so much, you know, people like you, people like Blair, Ariel, all of you guys who are, you know, uplifting voices of people who are, um, who are detransitioning and who are, you know, have similar stories to me because like you said, people don't really want to listen and it can be hard to, to kind of break through all the noise. So I really appreciate it. Oh, you're lovely, my friend. Thank you so much. Everybody, thank you for listening today. You know, like, subscribe, do all that stuff that I guess you're supposed to do. But I, I see you all. I see the comments. I'm super excited to see these comments. So everyone have a beautiful day and I'll see you next time.